I would like to again thank you for uh, joining us here on the Movie Social. And for those that yet to have met you, uh, this is Scott Christian Sava. I hope I got the name correct. You did. All right, good. And he is the creator of the new Netflix movie, Animal Crackers. So uh, before we divulge into a few questions here, uh, I know it came out originally over season a few film festivals in 2017. Yeah. And so it took a process for it to uh, release, uh, of course, on Netflix. I'm guessing you guys were, uh, were you guys shopping it around or were you building up funding? Yeah, I'll give you the, the, the shortest long version I can. Because <laughs> I mean, uh, so I, I came up with um, the idea f uh, while playing with my kids um, back in, God, it must have been, uh, I don't know, I'd say maybe 2010. I was, uh, you know, eating animal crackers in the backyard with my kids. And I just it's like, hey, what if you, when, when you eat a lion cookie, poof, you become a lion. And the kids loved it. And so they were, we were playing around with it. And I kind of just wrote it down. And, and uh, about six months later, I turned it into a graphic novel because I had been writing a bunch of graphic novels for the boys. And, okay. um, and so this was probably like my 13th one. But, you know, it was just it was on my list of books. And, and uh, the book never really got published at that point. But um, my buddy, uh, Kevin Grievous, um, you ever see the movie Underworld? Yes. So uh, he created Underworld. He wrote the script and he was raised the, uh, the werewolf, the guy who pulls the shurikens out of his chest with a really deep voice. Um, oh, wow. okay. he, so, you know, we've been friends for God, almost 20 years now. And he's like, dude, you should turn it into a screenplay. I was like, I went to art school. I don't know anything about <laughs> writing screenplays. He's like, I was a microbiologist when I wrote uh, Underworld. He goes, you don't need a degree in it. You just need to do it. And uh, so he really convinced me to kind of just go for it. And, uh, and I did, I turned into a screenplay and we got an offer from Harvey Weinstein. And fortunately we didn't take that deal. And, um, and we were, we were on food stamps and our house was in foreclosure at the time. And mm. this was about 20, 12 and my wife she says you know I, I i think we have a chance of doing something big i'm gonna go back to work and uh and, and i'm gonna you know I'll, I'll go i'll be the breadwinner and you go and you see if you can you take care of the kids and you see if you can find the money for this uh for the funding and it took two years she, she went back to work uh temping and whatever she could but for two years she did that while you know and i don't know anybody so it's not like i was actually leaving the house but it was just you know, asking cousins, asking friends, do you know somebody who, you know, uh, is, and it's kind of a weird thing to say, do you know anybody with $10 million who might want to invest in a movie? But uh, a friend of mine um, was at a party who met a guy who knew a guy and there was like 12 people between me and the money, but, and all of them got like credit in the film, but it was like the, you know, we, we, we found money in China. And, uh, and so we went from food stamps to two years later, we had $10 million in the bank account. And it was yeah. insane. And so we, we suddenly had this, this money and we're making a movie and um, we finished it up in, at the end of 2016. And, uh, and then we signed on with one studio and then they went bankrupt. And then we signed on with another studio and then we, they went bankrupt. And then we signed on with, uh, you remember the comedian Byron Allen? Yes. I he's, he's a comedian. He, he bought a movie studio. <laughs> And then, so he bought our film and then he just sat on it for 14 months. So it was just like one thing after another thing, after another thing, after another. And, uh, and, you know, we we finally got the film back and we got an offer from Netflix. And, um, and I think just the timing worked out good because, you know, all three of those studios were supposed to be a theatrical release. You know, that would have been like walking down the red carpet and, $50 million in marketing and, you know, just all that other stuff. But, um, you know, now in the time of COVID and everything, it was just, I guess the, the perfect thing to have as a kid's animated movie coming out yes. in the middle of all this. So it, it, it kind of worked out for the best. I would say so. And I'm glad it did work out. I <laughs> love it. My son has actually watched it a few times already. 
Oh, thank him for me. Thank him. <laughs> <laughs> really likes it. But I do really thank you for creating such a great movie. It was very welcoming. Thanks. And, uh, you did actually, in the process, answer our very first question <laughs> of how did you come up with uh, the idea of having crackers. And I might add, it's very uh, organic and I love it. Thanks. I mean, it, it's, look, it's all over the place. It's my first film, you know. Um, I, what, what did happen? Because everybody's like, uh, who's, who is Owen's dad? <laughs> it's like everybody's a question. <laughs> and so, like, I've even set up a macro on my computer. So, like, it automatically spits out the whole thing, you know, because I've had to answer it so many times. But I, I um, what had happened was the original screenplay was a guy who's working a crappy job gets a phone call saying you just inherited your a long lost uncle you never met just you know just died and you inherited uh, a circus that was the original story um a lot of things happened originally um james arnold taylor and tara strong were going to play um bob and talia or i'm sorry uh, uh, owen and zoe because they played owen and zoe in the first short that we did that we showed to harvey weinstein and um but it was going to be a direct to DVD and we were just going to keep the cast was voice actors. Uh, and Ian McKellen signed on and it was like, Holy crap. You know, cause you know, you, you throw out the names just to see if we can get one big name, you know, just to kind of Ian McKellen signed on then Sylvester Stallone, then Danny DeVito, then Raven Simone and Patrick Warburton. And, and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then suddenly it was like, we had to go get more money to make the quality better. So now it's going to become a theatrical release. And, and, and then John Krasinski and then Emily, Emily Blunt. And it was like, okay. And James and Lydia, uh, Lydia's, um, is James's uh, daughter, uh, James and Lydia and Tara Strong were the three actors that believed in me at the beginning. They were the three uh, actors who helped me raise the funds by doing that short for me. And um, so I wound up going back and adding the all of that prequel stuff all of that backstory so that way we could see that relationship and in doing so i unknowingly created this question of well how are they related to owen because you didn't <laughs> think about that when just you're watching a movie about a guy who just gets a phone call hey some long lost uncle died you inherited a circus no one says well who's his father no, because it's irrelevant but when you see all of that history it creates that, but I'm so close to this film for six years. I never even occurred to me that people might think that. So <laughs> this is just one of those learning things where, you know, I, I, uh, I just, I, I didn't see it. And it's just, I, so I just keep saying, I'm sorry. It's my, it's all I could say is this is my first film. I, I, I just didn't think about that. And so, uh, so that's the funny thing about that. Okay. Well, honestly, we kind of figured he had to be related to Bob because he looks so close and identical to Bob. Was yeah. there anything that made you guys make it, make him look similar to Bob, or was I, it just a fake chance? I think we just wanted to 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 give a little nod the fact that they're both Huntington's and that they were related. Um, I, you know, again, it was just. Uh, it's so funny how you know now I'm like, how stupid could I be? How could I not like at least mention a third brother? you know, put it in a photo or something like that, you know, or something. But um, it was just one of those things where it was, you know, there were the two brothers and, you know, Bob grew up at the circus. I mean, Owen grew up at the circus, you know, watching it. He loved being at the circus, but I just, and we had some narration. Originally we had a, a John Krasinski was narrating and, uh, and he would talk about how much he loved to go there every summer and, and, uh, and that might have explained things a little better. But um, I think at some point we just decided, because uh, we, we had both narration from Danny and John, and we just decided that Danny's was fit it better because he experienced that, whereas John didn't. Uh, and so, uh, you know, Dan Chesterfield was, was there for all of that from the very beginning, whereas Owen came in when he was a kid. And uh, so that was it. But yeah, it's just, it's funny to... You know, I mean, I'm an artist and I'm and, and I've done like Star Trek covers and I worked on Spider-Man and, and I've got to do things where, you know, you do a piece of artwork and you put it out there and then people will judge you on it. And that's one thing. But 
when you put out 90 minutes of content and it goes out on a streaming service of 200 million subscribers, <laughs> I get so many uh, questions. And, so, and, and it's really, really interesting to see what works and what doesn't. And now I understand why people do uh, those focus groups. You know, you, 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 you know hey, you want to see a movie for free and give us some feedback on it because you just don't know because you're so close to it. Um, so this, is, this has been a really, really educational experience for me. Uh, I'm glad to hear it. Well, do you think there might be a sequel where we do actually meet Owen's parents? Down the line? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I've already written um, a sequel and I've already got it. It's called uh, Animal Crackers 2, the second batch, or the, I think it's the second batch or the next batch, I think. Uh, but uh, I, I, you know, and I love it. That particular story revolves around, it, go, it picks up a year later and um, Mackenzie is practicing. She loves working at the zoo or at the circus and, uh, and she loves being a monkey and uh, Owen and Zoe, they go on a, on a business trip and he takes his, he takes the box of cookies with, with him. And um, Mackenzie being a kid, she wants to keep practicing. So she sneaks a couple of the monkey cookies. And uh, while, so while they're gone, she turns into a monkey to practice and uh, doesn't realize that the human cookie is going to be in the box and he's you know he's halfway around the world wow. and uh so and i won't tell anymore but basically it's 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 this whole thing where um you know it's, it's one thing bob and talia they're old you know it's like okay well you're stuck as dogs <laughs> you know oh, well <laughs> yeah dog and a cat but uh when your daughter gets stuck as an as a as a you know animal you you're gonna go and try to fix it. And so that's really kind of the quest of that thing is to try to find the source of the magic. Um, but uh, I, I love the world. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, but yes. I got to hear, you know, if Netflix is willing to do something like that. So well, you know, I'm hoping we'll that Netflix does and, and we can uh, all campaign to get it to sequel. <laughs> yeah. sure the kids will love it. Yeah. So yeah. Crazy. My daughter's name is also Zoe. And <laughs> So really? They said, Zoe, you could see my kids turn their heads like, huh? Are they talking about that? <laughs> well, they're, they're, um, Owen and Zoe were named after my niece and nephew. I always write in family members, and uh, they were named after the niece and nephew. And uh, um, in the book that, it, that I wrote, they were the niece and nephew. They were, I mean, they were brother and sister in the book. But when I aged it up for uh, the movie, they were husband and wife. Okay. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, you got to keep it with reality and yeah. <laughs> make it fit. Yeah. But I definitely do appreciate that candid moment. Now, uh, so as you explained, the whole process took quite a few years just to get it to the point of presenting it to people. Now, was it a moment where you were like, I'm ready to just give up and how did you get past that if so yeah yeah there was there was times where i was ready to uh just put the whole film up on youtube and say screw it we called it the nuclear option <laughs> you know it was just it was like oh god but um you know i had i had a lot of um family and friends encouraging me um because it was 2017 2018 2019 you know were really really rough and uh I had, um, you know, the musicians were really cool. You know, I'd get, I'd get calls from Huey Lewis and Howard Jones and the guys from Toad and Michael Buble. Um, I would get uh, uh, James Arnold Taylor, uh, Tara Strong, um, Patrick Warburton would check in on me. And, um, you know, it was, it was really good. It was, it was good because people cared about the film. They cared about me and uh, they encouraged me to just, keep, you know, keep on. Um, it was, you know, it's, it's hard because, um, I didn't get paid. You know, I, I, uh, what, what little money I got at the beginning paid off all the money I owed family and friends for being alive, you know, the previous <laughs> thing. And so, you know, we, we were hoping to get money at the end, you know, which is something, if anybody's ever making a movie, take the money up front, never, ever say I'll get paid at the end. So, um, it was kind of a captain goes down with the ship kind of situation. And I went down with the ship, but um, you know, it, it was, it was tough financially. And I think that always hurts, but uh, you know, I, like I said, I'm, I'm hoping I can get a second shot at it and, and you know, make the adjustments. Um, I didn't make a lot of mistakes 
on the film, but the ones I did were big. So I hope I can do it better next time. Well, we're hoping for a sequel as well. Thanks. Second chance. But uh, did you have a favorite part of the movie that you liked or a favorite part of the process that you liked? Um, my favorite part of the process, uh, there's a couple. I really liked, because uh, I'm, I'm in Franklin, Tennessee. And, uh, and the animation studio was in Valencia, Spain. And um, so they were six or seven hours ahead of me. And so I would love waking up, you know, six in the morning and there's like 30 or 40 new animated shots that I need to give notes on. And so I would open them up and see them and, and give them my notes. And I think I just, I love that kind of daily routine of just waking up and seeing the movie slowly come to life every day. It was really kind of cool and give my direction to it. Um, the other one was, um, I really loved meeting the, the musicians. Um, there was something, I mean, the actors were amazing, but musicians uh, connected, we connected more on, a, on an artistic level because, you know, our, uh, musicians take a blank canvas the same way I would with a painting and they just create something out of nothing. And, um, and I just, I, I, I love that about them. I love uh, hanging out with them. I love talking to them. And, and it was like hanging out with fellow artists and just, you know, cause when you, when you hang out with people with mutual interests and, and careers, it was really refreshing. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Definitely. I really, really love, I love music. And I love yeah. music in there. But, uh, so you've gotten those parts out of the way. Now, now that you've really taken the time to think on it, do you uh, think uh, that we can uh, share some crackers now? <laughs> <laughs> just, just a little bit there. Um, so I do have a question. Um, what got you into storytelling as far as like the whole process, the thought process, the imagination and so forth? What got you into storytelling? I, you know, it, it was, um, I was, when I was a, a kid, I'm 51. So when I was a kid, I grew up on those old Spider-Man cartoons and uh, I, I just fell in love with Spider-Man. And so I started collecting comic books and, and, and so that was my thing. And, so from when I was, I don't know, 15, 16, 17, I started like going to comic conventions and trying to get a job being an artist, you know, on Spider-Man and went to art school. Still, you know, I got rejected every year, every year, every year. And then um, when I was a junior in art school, I got an internship at Sega working on 16-bit video games. And, uh, and so, you know, that kind of got me into computers and animation. And then that turned into a game design job at Atari games, working on, uh, arcade games. Then I went down to Los Angeles and I worked on Star Trek comic books and Mortal Kombat comic books and more arcade games. And then I got into TV animation and movie animation doing Casper and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And so it was never the whole time. So I'm, you know, you're talking 13 years. 13, 14 years, I'm like, yeah, I'm working in video games, but I really want to be doing Spider-Man. Yeah, I'm making a movie, but I really want to be doing Spider-Man. So everything was about Spider-Man. And that was just like my singular focus. And then in 2001, I got the call and, and I got to do it. And uh, in 2002, my comic book series, you know, I did a four, four issue run, uh, came out and I was like, okay, I did it. I accomplished my life's dream. I'm 30, you know, two, 33 and I'm, I'm good. And, uh, and at that point we had um, kids, you know, my wife and I, we had the twins and, uh, and I wanted them to get into comic books. I wanted them to read Spider-Man, but the Spider-Man that was out was just not really for young kids. And, yeah. uh, and I was hanging out with Len Wein who had created uh, Wolverine and Marv Wolfman who created the Teen Titans and Blade, a um, bunch of old comic guys. And they were just encouraging me. They're like, don't work for Marvel. Don't work for DZ. Don't, don't give them your time. Look at, we, we spent our whole life creating stuff and now they're making millions of dollars off of our, off of our ideas. Go and make your own stuff. And so they encouraged me to go and create my own stuff. So I started writing books for my boys. And, uh, and that's where it just, I, I really kind of started to find a voice of, uh, I, I write very young. I, I, I like just 
wild, crazy, fun stuff. And uh, I don't take myself too seriously. And, and I think that kind of got me into that storytelling was my kids and the encouragement of, of, you know, those, those legends, you know, telling me to do that. And, um, and over that time, as I started to create the books, Hollywood started knocking, saying, hey, we want to option the rights to this. Hey, we want to option the rights to that. So I had Disney and Fox and Nickelodeon and, you know, they're all optioning, but nothing ever happened. And I think that was, so that, that went on for a few years and I realized, okay, I'm just going to do this myself. So that was, to kind of sum it all up, it, was, it wasn't a, a singular event. It was kind of like building up to that. And, uh, and I just eventually just said, let's just do it ourselves. Okay. Awesome, awesome. So my just my last question, because you, you actually already answered most of the questions that I actually had. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, not a problem. But what would you say to someone who is trying to get into the field of animation, storytelling, and writing and creating? You know, jokingly, my first reaction is run away, you know, get a real job. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, the boys, my boys are 17 now, but, you know, like we'd be driving an old you know, 1992 Jeep Cherokee that's falling apart and smells like an old hobo. And they're like, why do we, why are we so poor dad? You know, it's like, why are we I'm like, cause your dad's an artist, you know, that's, that's why this is not a career for the faint of heart. You know, um, if you, it, you know, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure this looks really cool. This is just a couple artists, you know, making, you know, a, a mock set. But the thing is, is that it is not, you know, you're not a rock star. You're not, you know, you're not, you know, a sports star. You're not making a lot of money. Um, it, is it possible? Yeah, but the odds are really low. So if you're, if you're going to do this, you have to be prepared to, to, to make sacrifices. You have to be prepared to, you know, like my wife who went back to work for two years, you know, she, she missed out on two years with the kids, you know, working at Target, working at, you know, a temp job, working whatever she could, just so we could even attempt this. And the chances of you actually finding someone who's going to give you $10 million is, you know, I mean, come on, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's like finding a leprechaun or something. So um, if you really want to do it, you have to, you have to be prepared to work your ass off. You have to be, I mean, I draw every day. I write every day. Um, I am, um, there that oops sorry this side the drawers back there are filled with thousands of paintings and drawings um, I I you know I if you see my Instagram you'll see I will do a drawing a day and I will just keep practicing keep practicing keep practicing I've written 13 14 15 books um, you you have to be better than everybody else you have to um, you have to stand out and and what you don't, what, you know, because we're not all as talented. I mean, there are some people who are just naturally talented. And I've met so many artists who are just, they have, you know, it's, it's kind of like actors, you know, it's like they have that thing that I don't know what it is, but he's got it, you know, <laughs> it's that thing, you know, and, and there's some athletes like that. And there's some actors like, I mean, but, but there's, there's, there's artists who just kind of just their very first thing out the gate and you know they're a sensation and the rest of us it's like i'm 51 years old and i'm still struggling to you know to feed my family and and so um it's just one of those things where you really have to if this is the life that you want to have you got to be prepared for the bad um because it's 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 can it be glamorous i'll let you know but right now you know it's it's uh it's been an uphill battle you know and i've had a lot of successes and, and, and as artists you you tend to forget because you constantly artists have their their eyes on the next thing you know like like i was i got to work on old sega genesis games i got to do star trek covers i got to you know uh work be the the animator lead animator on uh, the casper movies i got to do power rangers and none of that mattered because all i cared about was spider-man you know so <laughs> so you always got your eye on something else and then and i finally got to do spider-man and i and i you know really really celebrated and then it was like okay what's next and, and so, yeah, I, I wrote these books and then it's like, I want to make a movie. And now I've got this movie out and the movie's doing really well. It's the number one animated movie on Netflix. And yes. I, I don't, you know, I don't know, I don't know what's next, you know, and, and uh, I have ideas of all the things I want to do. And I want to make sure that I'm not disappointed because it's in my nature to always look at the next thing, look at, and I need to focus on like this last month, I, I, my wife and I said, we're going to every day, we're just going to just be thankful for where we are. We have a movie coming out, you know, and, and this last week it was, 
you know, we'd stop, we'd, we'd hug each other and we'd go, we did it. We got the movie out, you know, that. And, and so it, I think you have to take your little victories uh, along the way as well. I'm sorry, I was rambling, but yeah. No, no that was good. That was good. That's stuff that people need to hear, honestly. Mm -hmm. Because they, a lot of people might think it's just uh, glamour and easy, but it's really a lot of hard work, <laughs> dedication, and sacrifices. And you guys really sacrificed a lot, and we really thank you for giving us something to escape our reality, especially during this pandemic. Everybody needs something to escape from, and you provided that for us. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. We thank you for your time, and definitely Netflix. If you're watching this, let's get a sequel made. You don't have anything else to really waste. We have billions of dollars to waste on anything. We're just going to get the sequel to an animated kid. Yeah, you, guys you guys picked up Kissing Booth 3. Come on. Give me an animal yes. record score. <laughs> and they've already filmed it. I'm like, you, you have a film made for Kissing Booth 3 made before the second one came out. Yeah. It's a kids movie. It's a no-brainer. I, you know, it's funny, you know, my wife and I were just, we're looking at, we're going, we are such the underdog. We haven't even gotten a tweet, not even a tweet from Netflix, wow. not a retweet, nothing on their YouTube channel, nothing. So, you know, we were just like, okay, you know, this is, this is on us. And, and that's why we've been on every YouTube channel. Anybody who wants to talk about animal crackers, we're there, you know, because it's up to us. This, it's been us the whole time. You know, this is how we, this, this movie got made. So, um, you know, and I'm, we're not angry at Netflix. It's just whatever the whatever the the politics or the priorities are, that's fine. But you know, we're we're we have to keep pushing it. You know, this is our one shot. You know, I don't want to sound like Hamilton or anything, but it's like this is our shot. You know, mm -hmm. and and we're not going to throw it away. Yeah, so. definitely. So, if another studio did approach you guys for a sequel, would you take the opportunity? Oh, absolutely. And, and I have 15 other books too. You know, I got Pet Robots, Cameron and his Dinosaurs, My Grandparents Are Secret Agents, Gary the Pirate, Ed's Terrestrials. You know, I got a ton of stuff. You know, I've, I've, I've got um, the, the Dreamland Chronicles, which is a comic book series I did online. Um, those are the characters in the opening logo for my logo, uh, the, the, the fairy and the rock giant. That was a series I did uh, for my boys. Um, I did eight books of that series. And, uh, and so, you know, I would love to tell that story. So, I mean, yeah, I've got a ton of stories. I don't lack for ideas or, or, or even properties, but it's like, man, I just need a, I need a chance. And, and I feel horrible saying I need a chance because my, my movie's out and I feel like I got a chance, but um, I'd like a chance to, to be able to put my kids through college. <laughs> that's what, at this point, that's what I want to do. But we hope that you uh, do get some more opportunities and I'm definitely going to be picking up more of those books and checking out the comic books, especially for my kids. They need thank more you. things to read and watch. Thank you. Thank you. I hope they like the books and, uh, and, but uh, thank you. Thank you both for having me on and, and thank you again for the wonderful review. I, I really loved watching it and, and I appreciate the honesty and, and, and everything. Thank you guys. But thank you. And no problem. Said, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Part there. I, I'm, I know you've seen our uh, comparison of Samuel Jackson. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what, what went through your mind with creating that character's facial expressions? Because it looks so realistic to that moment. I, I swear, because I know Carter Goodrich. Um, you know what? Carter's got a Carter's got a weird streak in him. He might have. <laughs> I might need to find out because, like, I, I, I my, my gut is is that. Because he he based a young Horatio off of like Glenn Campbell and Elvis Presley, and yeah. in my mind, he just took that and aged it up. You know, that's 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 what I'm thinking. But Lord knows if he was watching Django and <laughs> got the idea, I don't know. I'm gonna I'll ask him. I'll I'll send him an email and ask. But. Uh, that that is I, I I never noticed it until some, it was it you guys posted it or somebody posted it. Yeah, yeah, yeah we did. We had to put the that's crazy. Person, it's like, funny. It's, it's like, you know, it, people people are like, oh my god, Chesterfield looks like Danny DeVito. I was like, it, that was designed way before Danny came on board. You know, so it was it was just some of this stuff is just funny coincidences, but uh, otherwise, I, like I said, there's there's a small possibility. Um, because I, 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 I did a video chat with um, Carter 
last week and and he was uh drinking his jameson whiskey and uh and i was like maybe he was drinking a little much jameson watching Django, and maybe that hit him i don't know so i'll have to ask all right well i definitely thank you and again thank you for your time and for those that have not yet watched animal crackers on netflix i don't know what you're waiting for go watch it and it's been a pleasure thank you scott thank you and i hope you uh definitely get a sequel going all right thank you nice meeting you both Nice. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.